This is a podcast about one woman's mission to help entrepreneurs and business owners write better business books. Each week, we tackle your writing excuses, because there are excuses too, and help you beat the blank page of doom so that you can write the book that will grow your life and your business. Now, here's your host, Vicky Fraser. Hello, and welcome to the 1000 Authors Show. My name is Vicky Quinn Fraser. <laughs> That's very weird. That was a weird one. Hello. You should introduce yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my husband, Joe. Why was that weird? I was trying to sound like a radio announcer. Okay. Is that why it was weird? That was why it was weird. Okay. Um, so we're changing the name of the podcast soon because of reasons. Are we? Yeah, it's going to be called Notes in the Margin. Okay. To go with my newsletter and other things that I do. Got the um, new logo sorted and everything. Would you like to see it? Oh, uh, it's not really much of a radio topic. It's not. It's not great. Not great radio. I was asking you if you'd like to see it. Oh, well, I mean, the answer is yes, but not right now. We're okay. doing a podcast now. Okay, cool. So, um, <laughs> what are you reading at the moment? Also, it's currently like 36 degrees Celsius outside, which I think is like 109 Fahrenheit for anyone listening in the States. I'm not sure that's true, is it? Let's find out. Let's Google that. Um, but it's it's a really sticky, humid temperature. It's horrible. Um, we're not really we're not really up for this. Well, it's not because I don't want to like be one of those people who just complains. That's not a helpful conversion. Well, type the number you want converted into Fahrenheit. Okay. Convert thirty four Celsius. Ninety three point two. It's going, you know, up there towards 100, which feels like a lot. But it's, yeah, it's, it's dripping wet. It's minging. Yeah. I don't want to be like a person who just complains about the weather. But also I'm going to complain about the weather <laughs> a little bit because I... We're not built for this in the UK. I mean, our house is great because the walls are like 15 feet thick and it's actually really cool in there. And but it's just on the ground. I really feel for people in like newer houses because they're just going to be little hot boxes. And yeah... And also, I just melt into a puddle in this kind of way. I just can't function. So I've basically decided that today and tomorrow, we're recording this on the 18th and 18th of July. Yeah. Um, I'm just really writing off. I'm not like totally taking the days off, but I'm just, I'm giving myself one thing to do. And if I get that thing done, that's cool. Sure. So today was the hottest day in recorded history in ever, ever in Wales, really? which is just over the road, pretty much from us. But hey... Climate change isn't a thing, and we're not fucking the planet. No, yeah, it's all good. Everything's fine. It's just summer, apparently. This is fine. This is everything's fine. We're like that meme. This country, the dog, with the dog, with the like in the house on fire, and it's like everything's fine. I feel like that's yeah. So yeah, everything's not fine, and we're screwing the world. So you know, this is not just summer, and let's try and fix it before um, we're all dead. Really. Well, yes. Right, what are we doing? Right, well, Joe, what are you reading? Um, I'm reading The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Dick, which I bought in an airport a couple of weeks ago. And honestly, I'm kind of struggling with it. Mm. Which is bad because Philip K. Dick writes really good books. It's and, not bad, you don't have to like it. And, and I've read, read stuff of his and I've really enjoyed it. And uh, this one, I'm feeling more like it's about political intrigue and... We didn't, Japan, we didn't Japanese really philosophy. En- we didn't really enjoy the TV series, did we? we oh, I only watched an hour of it and then drifted like, off to do something more fun. Yeah, I just it was very. I remember it being very dark and yeah. just like I can't be asked to strain my eyes looking at this. It's very, it's very noir. <laughs> yeah. Um, so How yeah. About you? Well, I started reading The Scar by China Mayville, which is an amazing book. I abandoned it because it bored me. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I will give it another go one no, day. No, it's fine. Fine. No, I'll give it another go one day because I know he's he's supposed to be a great author and, I, you know, he is a great author and all the rest of it. But I love world building. Like, I'm a fan of epic fantasy. I read a lot of epic fantasy and, and sci-fi. But his world building just didn't, in this book did not grab me. The characters did not grab me. It's okay. Not my thing. Um, but I'm now reading The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams. And I fucking love it. I need to thank Sarah Silver. Thank you so much, Sarah, who I know is listening. Hi. Hi, Sarah. Um, because she thought I would really enjoy it. And so when she finished reading it, she sent it to me in the post. Nice. Yeah. Post books to your friends, people, because um, it's a lovely thing to do. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and I'm loving it. I've cried three times so far. It's a beautiful book. It's about... 
it's it is fiction, but it's about the writing of the Oxford English Dictionary okay. and fictionalized account of it. And it's just it's about this um, this girl Esme, whose dad is one of the editors of the dictionary, and she ends up collecting women's words because only men's word they went they only collected words that are written down for the dictionary you see with provenance um which is bullshit for many reasons um but obviously that excludes like a whole section of society including mostly women okay Milk women and poor people and uh, minorities so um she may, anyway it's a really good book it's a really good book um and the non-fiction that i've just finished reading is show your work by austin cleon i think that's how you pronounce his name i should have checked that which i love his like follow him on Instagram because his Instagram posts on creativity are brilliant. Um, and I'm also reading, i am just started reading Good Pop, Bad Pop, An Inventory by Jarvis Cocker. And it's Jarvis Cocker's memoir. And I'm loving it, not just because Pulp was like one of my favourite teenage bands, um, but also because it's just such a good idea. So it's a memoir, but he is writing it through the medium of clearing out his attic. Nice. So it's like items from his childhood like all the way through I've not I've only got like a third of the way through the book so far but I'm just like I love the premise and also it's just a whole like memoir on creativity and how creativity works and where it comes from and also he's very funny mm. uh, which I already knew because super smart guy yeah he's just he's just awesome so um, I really thoroughly recommend that to everybody because if you're thinking of writing a book about your you know a memoir or a, about yourself or anything then it's just really cool to find different jumping off points and like his jumping off point was clearing out his attic Mm. and it's just such a good idea so yeah so we've kind of already done a little bit of this week at casa dingle because it's very hot i bought we bought a piece of furniture that i'm gonna turn into a sink vanity unit Uh in the bathroom i was gonna do some of that this weekend but it was so hot outside i did not want to be outside just didn't want to do anything really no and we use pythagoras's theorem didn't we talk about this last week? Oh, maybe. Joe's <laughs> Joe's just taking his shirt off. Oh, man, it's gross in here. Huh? Take your shirt off. Then. It's so hot. So very hot. This is great. Now I've got a half-naked husband. Oh, you've done that football shirt thing where you pulled it over your head. Like oh. a football hooligan. Um, anyway, so, right. What we'll, are we doing? We'll get on with it because it's very hot. So, um, we're talking this week about how I get shit done. Why are we doing that? Because... Um, Louise, hi Louise. Hi Louise. Was talking the other day about she was having some challenges with getting shit done and being interrupted and having her day derailed, which I to- which I hundred um, percent understand because if like there is nothing like an unexpected afternoon appointment to completely fuck my day over, it will destroy me. I've got the burps now because nice. Joe brought milkshakes home and I don't really drink milk, <laughs> but it was great. It's worth it. Um, so yes, and so I offered to um, go through in one of my power hours. Like what my days look like and how I organise myself and how I try and put mechanisms in place to cope with that sort of unexpected nonsense. Uh-huh. Um, and the people who were in the call were like, oh, that was really awesome. It was really useful. You should turn this into a piece of content. And so I was like, right, I'll make a podcast. So here we are. Yeah. So we're going to do this interview styly. Joe's going to ask me questions. How's your week been? Wow, that happened fast. Um- <laughs> <laughs> Question one. <laughs> How has your week been? I mean, I'm going to take this week and last week's obviously it's Monday. Um, oh yeah, okay. So, but yeah, I mean, it's been all right. My week has been all right. Um, this week's been quite tough for a bunch of reasons, not least because it's been so warm mm-hmm. and it's getting warmer. And I really like my, I really struggle to function in the heat. Like yeah. my, my brain just can't do it. And so I was trying to do all of the things that I would usually do in this heat. And I just can't do it. And then I was feeling like shit. I was beating myself up and just being like, oh, why am I just so crap? Because I should be able to, should, 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 should be able to do all of these things instead of adapting to circumstances. Okay. Plus, I've been feeling very overwhelmed by like all of the things I want to do. And I've also been torturing myself with comparisonitis and all sorts of things like that. So it's been quite a tough week. Sounds fun. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, it's not been like it's not been a horrible week but it's been difficult i've really struggled some days to pick myself up off the floor and just do anything like executive function has been non-existent and it's been really really frustrating so that's how it's been you kind of live your life in lists do 
Tell me the story of the lists. Why the lists? How the lists? So... What's the lists? I've always had a lot of lists, and I thought that everybody had lots of lists, and apparently they don't. I mean, I know everybody has a shopping list, but... I mean, some people don't. But, like, here is an example. So here is why I have lists. This is in, in, micro, in microcosm. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I went to the doctors, and that was a whole thing that was stressful because I was nearly late through... I was going to say no fault of my own, but that's kind of not true. Um, <laughs> and then I was like, I have no lunch. I'm going to go to the co-op on the way home. And as I drove into the car park, I realised I didn't have a list and I just, I just couldn't face I just couldn't face it because what would happen would be I would spin around slowly, not knowing what to buy, and I would either come out with nothing and cry or I would buy everything and cry. And so what I did was I drove straight around the car park, all the way out, and then on an impulse, ducked into a shop and bought a very tiny bookcase. So when I got home, <laughs> I had... A very small bookcase. And no food. <laughs> no lunch. Um, and so that is, like, in microcosm, a really good example of why I have so many lists. Um, so my... There's a, there's a thing, and I'm learning all of this stuff because since I got my ADHD diagnosis, I've been doing a lot of research, obviously. All right. Um, and... There is a thing, and I've always, like, do you remember when I used to joke that I'd be like, oh, my God, I think I'm getting, like, do you think I'm getting dementia? Because I just really struggled with remembering things. Like, do you remember I used to joke about it? Mm -hmm. I've joked about it for years. And apparently this is a thing. Working memory doesn't work <laughs> for um, a lot of people with ADHD. And so, like, I cannot... If you have a string of numbers, like a phone number that I'm putting in, I will have to look back at the phone number three or four times because I simply can't hold the uh -huh. numbers in my head like I can't remember strings of numbers um I can remember my parents phone number from when I was a child but I can't remember like I can't remember a lot of my childhood um if I use something enough I can remember it but just for that like short-term work in memory I really struggle it's why I have so many tabs open all the time uh -huh. that, that my tabs are my working memory it's why so if I show you my emails I if I open, I see your emails. Well, no, but if I open my emails that is all of the emails that I've got open. This is how I cope with emails. That's a lot of open emails. Yeah, that's how I cope with um, working through my emails because I hit enter and actually physically open it instead of just having it open in the preview pane right. because then I know that I need to deal with it. Okay, so you open, so you like select 100 emails, open them all, no, and no, then no. work your way down the list. One, no, I'm more selective than that. I'm like, oh, that one, that's one that I want to read later. So instead of like trying to remember to read it later, which will not happen, I, open, just open, it, it. I open it up. Yeah. And then it sits there until you deal with it. Exactly, okay. yes. So it's a list of emails you need to deal with. Yeah, exactly. And so I also have a daily life list as well. So like on my daily life list, I will have run, yoga, have a shower, eat breakfast, eat lunch, wash up. That often doesn't get done. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, put washing in, put washing out, bring washing in, put washing away. And I know, like, Joe's looking at me like I'm a lunatic, and I'm sure people are listening and like, why don't you just put do laundry? Because do laundry is too big a thing. It's like there are too many moving parts to it. And so I list out absolutely everything, and then I can do, like, put it out, tick it off, bring it in, tick it off, put so it away, tick it off. So big tasks are hard. Big so you, couldn't, you can't just have, like, tidy the room. No, 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 no. Yeah. So absolutely not. Because it's like, where do you where do you start? There's a lot of components to tidying a room. It's like, where do you start? And so if I list out all of the aspects of cleaning a room, it's like, okay, put shit away. Um, you know, Hoover, who dust. Dust, 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 Hoover, mop floor, um, clean desk. Um, you know, tidy massive piles of books that are all over the place. Um, yeah, so if I break it down, then I can I can do it. But if all I have on my list is tidy room, it's not going to happen. Okay, um, fair enough. And that is a coping mechanism that I have just developed over the years. Apparently, it's a a, a thing. It's like okay. it's what coaches and think people will tell you to do. Um, but that is like um, an executive function issue. It's like the idea of getting up to clean my room. It's just too much, and so my brain's it's not like specific enough. Absolutely not. So it's it's the idea of doing the small, the tiniest possible thing, right? That we talked about last week. Yeah. So you don't you don't eat the frog. You don't you don't pick the big ugly job that needs doing and go and do that. Absolutely not. That is honestly, I think that's that that advice gives me the rage, and because it's bandied about by so many people, and I'm sure that like 
maybe you will be like, well, that's fine advice for me because I can like get the worst thing out of the way. But for me, it's just this massive thing that I don't want to do. So it's not only a big thing, it's also a thing that I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. And you put those two things together, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not. But what's also going to happen is I'm not going to do anything else either because I'm going to spend the whole day worrying about not doing, not doing that thing. thing that should, yeah. I'm going to feel shit about myself. I'm going to feel ashamed. So there's like a whole layer of shame on there as well and guilt because there'll be, you know, there's other people relying on me to do stuff probably as well. And so it just becomes this big thing. So, um, that advice can absolutely suck my bum. Like, it's really crap advice for neurodivergent brains. But also, I think it's not that great advice for everybody all the time anyway. Mm. Because, you know, everybody struggles with stuff sometimes. And so I think instead, it's like, let's break the thing, the big thing, into tiny things. So how, 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 how small does that thing have to be? Well... It depends on the task and the day and my mood. And, you know, there's also a caveat that sometimes none of this shit works and I just really struggle, like with everything all day. Um, but pick the tiniest thing that you cannot fail at. Sometimes it is, so we talked about this a bit last time, but like say we're, say I'm like cleaning my office. It might be pick up that book, close it and put it on the bookshelf. And that might be the tiniest, that you know, that might be the biggest thing that I can do. Other days and it is might. is that something that needs to go on a list before you do it? Sometimes. Depends. Okay. Like, I won't, I won't, usually won't break, I'll usually be like, tidy my desk, dust the bookshelves, tidy my chair, water the plants kind of thing. Hmm. So I'll usually break them down into like bigger chunks than that. But yeah, I will, I will break tasks down. But the other, the other thing that I will do is, and this is like thinking about the eat the frog thing and this is related to it, it's like that idea that you reward yourself after you've done the thing. You don't do that? Well, I do, but that's not the only, you know, with, with the eat the frog thing, it's like, no, I'm going to start my day with something I really enjoy that I know I can do. Right. Because that will give me a little boost of... Gets you moving. Gets you moving, gets, gets some momentum going. And then it means that, you know, I'm more likely to do the thing that I want to do in the day. Mm -hmm. And so there's, you know, related to that, I've just changed the way I do things as well, because I used to have three things that I wanted to get done in a day, and there would be three important things. And I've changed that because I'm like, well, I often don't get all of those three things done. And then I feel like shit. And, you know, I've, I've got things that have been stretching on and on on my list that, you know, sometimes they disappear because they're not that important, but these are important to me. Mm. And so I've changed it and it's like, I've still got three things that I'd like to get done, but now I have one focus for the day. And it's like, if Do I this. get, if, yeah, this one thing, if I get this one thing done, today is a win. Um, and that is like, it's like a big load has been lifted off my shoulders. So I'm learning new ways of dealing mm. with like, you know, my days all the time. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about like the marshmallow test. Okay. Because um, you know that marshmallow test, Th right? Is this the one where you... you Puts a, put a marshmallow in front of a small child and then say, if you don't eat this in the next five minutes, I'll come back and give you ten. Or two. Two. Yeah. Whatever. And then you leave the child alone to wrangle with its desire to eat the marshmallow. Yeah. And apparently the videos are hilarious because like there'll be children like stuffing their fists in their mouths going, ah, <laughs> and stuff. And some of the kids will just eat the marshmallows. And you wouldn't eat the marshmallow, would you? You, you would wait. No. I mean, I'm not that bothered about marshmallows, but no. It, I'm not, yeah, that'd yeah. be fine. I would eat the marshmallow. Yeah. I mean, you've seen me eat polos. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> so, oh, man. So, quite often there's polos in my car, <laughs> which, are, which for those of us who are not native to the UK, is small, hard mints. Polos are around. With the a world, hole in? With a hole in. That's right? the most important part. So. Did you know you can buy holes? Yes. <laughs> You can buy the holes, they punch out the middle. Um, and and what I'll do is I'll have a packet of polo mints and I'll eat one or two a day and they'll last a, a packet of polo mints will last me a week. How? And I do a lot of driving in my car. Whereas what Vicky will do is she will sit down in the passenger seat of my car, eat the entire packet of polo mints and then put her seatbelt on. That's absolutely 100% not true. <laughs> I put my seatbelt on, I drive off, I try and resist, I make it like... 50 yards. And then you eat the whole packet. And then I dive into the packet of polo mints. <laughs> you eat all of the polo mints. So the number of times I just get into my car and discover that all of the polo mints have been eaten in I my do. absence because you borrowed my car. Well, you shouldn't leave the polo mints there. Anyway, the marshmallow test, I would fail. I would have failed it as a child. I would fail it now. 
I don't know. I mean, some days I could probably pass it. It's fine. But the, the it's, I, not, it's not a pass fail thing, is it? It's a well, no, it isn't. But there's layers of bullshit with this marshmallow it's, test it's an because it's used of as an it's an indicator. They've used it as an indicator of success, and it's like if you fail the marshmallow test, then basically you're doomed to a life of failure and misery. But, it's not quite like that. But they have like looked at outcomes, mm-hmm. and they've looked at you know people who pass the marshmallow test tend to be very high performing, very successful. I'm doing successful in air quotes because it's success as measured against a very you know yes, yeah, success as measured by capitalism. Yeah, and you know misery. Um, but I, it does. Make, it did make me wonder. It's like, well, why are kids failing the marshmallow test? Um, and there's many, many reasons why. And they've been looked into. And I, you know, I suspect some of them are ADHD and you know all, all sorts of different neurodivergencies. And also like neglect, childhood neglect, because children don't trust that they're going to get the marshmallow. Yeah, so they don't believe you're going to come back and give them another one. They're just going to eat that one. They're going to eat the one they've got. So, which is totally understandable. And so, and that there's, there's just it's so much more nuanced than just if you fail the marshmallow test, you're less likely to be successful. Sure. Um, yeah. And I just think also we're living in a world that's very narrowly made for a very narrow set of parameters of, of people you know? yeah we kind of go well these people are you know neurotypical and everybody else is different and has weird quirks and it'd be nice to just to be oh, you know people are people they have different yeah. behaviors they have different brains they have different behaviors exactly and even in the like even in the kind of parameter of normal there's a vast array of, of different so. types of people so um so yeah the whole the whole thing is is skewed and there's a lot of layers of bullshit about it and it really irritated me but the, the point of the thing is it's like you do a hard thing and then you get a reward Mm-hmm. And the hard thing in the case of the marshmallow is waiting a little bit to get double marshmallows. Um, so, but for me, that does not work. It never has worked because it's like, well, I'm going to have, you know, I'm, I'm going to have the reward first. And, you know, I always have done this. Like, I'm not going to wait until after my pole class to eat the, mar- to eat the polos. I'm just going to eat the fuckers on the way to the, on the way to Harvard. But, and so what I've discovered is, and again, this is through doing research, but also through being me for as long as I've been existing <laughs> for existing it's like if I reward myself first and I give myself that little dopamine hit I can then ride that dopamine wave and do the thing and then I can reward myself again, again afterwards and but that's really important it's like both of these things are really important it's like some people are not going to need the dopamine hit before they do the thing mm-hmm. they're not going to need it and for me that might be like eating a marshmallow it might be that was me fiddling with my fidget toy. It might be just literally spending five minutes with my earphones on, listening to a song on repeat, which is currently unstoppable by Sia. Um, and Joe's <laughs> just made a really yeah. nasty face. And fiddling with my fidget toy. And I'll do that like for five minutes and then I'll be like, yeah, this is great. Or maybe I'll get up and dance to something. Mm-hmm. And I'll come and do the thing, and it makes a massive difference. It makes a massive difference to me. And then once I've done the thing, I'm like, right, now I celebrate, and I actually do a little cheer. I'm like, woo, yay me. And that's really important as well, because if you can associate a little celebration with the thing that you kind of sometimes do want to do, but also don't want to do. Mm. Um, I'm in danger of procrastinating about. Exactly. And so, like, if you've you've seen me running back from my run first thing in the morning when you've been in my (laughs) car, I run like I'm crossing the finish line, don't I, with my arms in the air. And I actually go, yay, as I finish. Because for me, that's like, it makes me feel good. And it means I'm going to go out and run again tomorrow morning. (laughs) even if I don't feel like it. So that's really important. So if you've, if you're like a person who, if you're like a person, if you are like a person, (laughs) if you're a person who has always thought, well, the marshmallow test is fucking stupid. Having a reward afterwards doesn't work for me. What's wrong with me? Give yourself a little reward first and then do the thing and then reward yourself afterwards. Just see if it works. See what what happens. Are you sure you're not giving yourself the reward first and then beating yourself up about the thing because you now feel guilty about having not done it? No, because I'm deliberately giving because okay. yeah but that might have been what I used to do but now I'm like I understand my brain a bit better I'm like no I'm going to do a thing that makes me feel good and then I'm going to do the thing that I want to do or have to do okay. and then I'm going to reward myself for it and then it's like cool this is this is the way that I get into you know you see like runners and people psyching themselves up before big races and you know Michael Phelps has his earphones on doesn't he and I think a lot of people do yeah and they're like doing my thing doing my thing and you know I'm sure part of it is that kind of getting themselves revved up to do the thing they need mm. to do. I thought that's ritual as well, I would think. Ritual, yeah. And ritual ritual and routine, really fucking important for me. Mm. Really important, yes. So you've got a plan? What do. if it goes wrong? Well, sometimes disaster happens. And like... <laughs> so here is it. You achieve nothing for the whole day. And some, Yeah, sometimes I do. And 
that's what happens, you know, it's just what happens. Um, so I am really aware of when I work best and when I don't work best. So for example, if I've just done a handstand workout, it's a really good idea for me to then spend an hour doing work because I'll do my handstand workout and I'll be like, oh, I feel really good. I'm, and then I'm like really fired up to do something that I may have been procrastinating on all afternoon. Right. So it would make far more sense for me to be like, you know what, I'm going to do nothing this afternoon. I'm going to do my handstand workout and then I'm going to spend an hour in the evening doing yeah, some work because that's the other thing it's like and this is another thing because i'm sure there are people listening who are like everybody's a little bit adhd and autistic it's like go and do some research because that's a really invalidating and shitty thing to say to people um i know you're trying to help but it's not helpful um and b i've forgotten where i was going i don't know derailing i've derailed myself you've derailed oh you might be th- yeah people who might be thinking um you know well why have you bothered to get a diagnosis at all why is it important to you because i know that you had asked ask that question mm-hmm. it's a reasonable question and i had asked myself that question as well it's like why is this important to me and i thought i knew and then when i actually got my diagnosis it's made a massive difference in a bunch of ways um like emotional and psychological but in a really practical way it has um oh my god what has it done what has the diagnosis done it has allowed me to step outside of this box that is the way things are supposed to be done, right? right? It's like, this is how things work. This is how we do things. This is how you do this. And it has allowed me to set fire to that fucking box. Go, that doesn't work for me. And look at other ways to do things that might be a bit weird. And it's like the nine to five box is one of those things. It's mm-hmm. like, I don't think that works very well for literally anybody, but it works particularly badly for people with... Um, neurodivergent brains because it's like well I'm supposed to be like creative and productive within this little like Mm -hmm. nine to five box it's like no that does not work for me I'm really good in the morning first thing in the morning up to lunchtime in the afternoon I'm an absolute waste of space Um, so there's there are things I will do in the afternoon that are just you know yes whatever and then in the evening early evening after I've done some exercise that's when I'm really feeling creative again so it's like why on earth do I try and squash myself? And even running my own business, I've tried to squash myself into this nine to five mm-hmm. box. And it's like, it's really not helpful. So that's another thing. It's like, what was the original question? I, I, I've, I have no idea. Derailing. I've derailed myself like several, four times. Yeah, several times in this one de- answer on derailing. It's because I'm very excited about all this it's and like, I want to it's, share it's, it. It's a top example of being derailed. Yes. So here is an example. One of my lovely neighbours texted me um, a week or so ago and was like, oh, can I just pop round this afternoon for this? And I was like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. Um, and I did not say it like that to her. Um, but I said, I will pop round later because if she had come round and knocked on the door, that would have... And I know if, like, you, you might be listening and thinking, that, well, why is that a big deal? Because it would have fucking derailed my entire afternoon and I would not have been... I would have, A, been waiting for her. Waiting for her to pop up. Waiting for her to pop up, because um, waiting mode is a thing. Um, and B, I would have just... I just wouldn't have been able to concentrate. It's just that's that would have been my focus. It would have been really bad. So, And so, like, one of uh, Louise's questions was, well, what happens if something derails your day? And so I plan in nonsense time... <laughs> which other people call buffer zones. And right. so it's like, my entire afternoons tend to be nonsense time. So it's like, because I know that I'm not very creative in the afternoon and I tend to be not very productive, it's like, okay, if something like happens during the day that's unexpected, it's going to get shunted into nonsense time. It goes to the afternoon. Yeah. And if nothing happens in nonsense time, then I've either had a very nice afternoon off or if it's been a good day, I've actually got stuff done that I wasn't expecting to do. And if the day does get derailed, then I've planned for it Mm -hmm. and it doesn't feel like such a disaster. Um, And so if there is like... So if it gets really hot, my brain has just stopped. It just stopped then. (laughs) Did you see the switch off? I did. Anyway, I can't, I can't remember. What's the next question? <laughs> overwhelm. <gasps> Let's talk about overwhelm. How do you cope with it? Do you, do you suffer from it? I mean, yeah, you do. Yeah, I'm overwhelmed a lot. Um, it's a key feature. It's, it's, a, it's a feature of my brain. <laughs> it's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> it's a bug, it's a feature. I hate it. I really hate it. Um, it's really stressful. Um, I'm also anxious literally all the time um, to a certain degree. And so... And it's just like, and you looked really sad then. Um, but I, it's kind of like, it, it, it's it's like a my base level of anxiety is quite high compared to you, for example. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's a given. But also it's like, 
I don't want it to be like that forever, but I'm, I'm kind of used to it. So it's like, what, it is what it is. Um, but I don't like being overwhelmed. It's very stressful. It's very anxiety inducing. And so I really hate it. But this is why I have lists and all of these things, because the over, like one of the things that overwhelms me is a big task to do that isn't broken down. Another thing that I'd overwhelmed was my big to-do list. So that my daily to-do lists, and I can, this is going to be terrible. Um, very bad radio. But like, you, Joe can see that my entire space for to do is like filled. There's like twenty things there on There's the list. There's twenty things there on the list, and da 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 da. And then I had a little bit of an epiphany. And these and, are like daily lists, yeah. Yeah, and then there's like eight things on it. Yeah. And three of them are things that I would really like to get done. And then there's just like little bits and pieces that um, are, are You're daily. Just not, just not losing track of. Yeah, I'm just not losing track of. And so I discovered that um, what I what I do now is I have a monster month list. So at the beginning of every month or at the end of every month, I plan the next month and I'm like, these are all of the things that are important to me at the moment. They're not things that I have to do, but they are things that are important to me and they're ongoing. If by the end of the month I have not finished something, it either gets sacked off because I don't care about it anymore or it gets pushed forward to the next month. Right. And from that list, I make my daily to-do lists and it's like, right, what is my focus for today? I wanted to, so today, for example, I wanted to get my notes in the margin article and email scheduled. Um ready for going out tomorrow and I did that was what I did um for example tomorrow's focus is I want to get another welcome email written for my welcome sequence for people who just joined my email list because that's an ongoing project Mm -hmm. I'm working my way through that the day after I would like to get a sales page written for um that's not a sales page a landing page written for a thing that I'm doing Mm -hmm. um the day after that the one thing that I would like to do is Whatever the next... Whatever that is. Yeah, whatever that is. And so it's like, this is the one thing that is important to me that I would like to do today. And because before I was like, here are three things that I must get done today, quite often I wouldn't even get one of them completely finished. And I'd make a little bit of progress on all of them, but it's just like this endless moving target. Slowly creeping towards halfway point on lots of tasks. Yeah. And so I have stopped doing that. It's like, if my to-do list, daily to-do list is too long, no, I'm going to stop that. And I'm going to have a monster month list, so that I, which is literally so I don't lose track of the things that are important to me. Because as I've explained, working memory is, is a problem. Um, and I will suddenly remember things a month later. I'll be like, oh, I wanted to do that. Yeah. And then, you know, I'll be sad because I could have done it by now. So I do. I have that monster month list and I check it every day. Like one of the things on my daily to-do list is check the monster month list to see what's there. And, and it's you'll, like, you'll pick a thing or two yes. and put them on your daily list. Yes. And that is how it works. And so some of it can roll over or some of it can be deleted. Okay. So, um, so yeah. And speaking of lists, so my life list, I have a life list as well. And I kind of mentioned it, but that's like all the things that need to get done in a day. So it'll be like laundry and breakfast and, and people might be like, how do you forget to eat breakfast? Oh, really easily. Really easily. (laughs) Um, so it'll be like, um, clean out the chickens and change the water, change the sheep's water. And, you know, things that need are important, things that need to happen, feed the cats, da, 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 do the laundry whatever the things are yeah. and that's the only way they get done because otherwise I'm just like otherwise what happens is a big amorphous blob of domestic chores gathers above my head and I don't know what any of them are but I know there's a lot of them mm. and then I don't do anything because I can't focus on work because I know that there's house things to do you can't focus on house because there's work things to do yeah and it just becomes a nonsense so that is why I have so many lists yeah cool yeah so that is um an insight into my brain. What do you think? Sounds, I mean, it, it kind of sounds on, on the one hand chaotic and difficult, and on the other hand, really quite organised. That is a really good description of what it's like in here. I mean, it sounds like, it feels like one of those, um, you know, the interview questions, you know, what's your greatest weakness? And it, it's like, well, actually, my brain is on fire most of the time, but I'm really organised. Yeah, because it's like, it is, it's like, because I don't, I don't like thinking... So some people are like, oh, ADHD is a disability. And some people are like, oh, ADHD is a superpower. And I'm like, it's both at the same time. Yeah. Because if you... if Like, I am really good at having people... Like, people are like, oh, I feel really overwhelmed. And I'm like, right, we're going to fucking sort this out. Um, and I will be able to break down exactly what they need to do into tiny manageable things. Much better than I can for myself. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that is, a, that is a thing that I'm able to do. And I'm able to do that for writers, which is why I think... Um, I'm such a good coach for people with brains that are not, you know, standard, Um, which I didn't realise until recently why I had so many clients who were neurodivergent. It makes sense now. (laughs) Um, 
But yeah, and I just think it's both it's a disability and it's a superpower. Cool. It'd be really nice if more people understood. Like, I haven't really told that many people yet. I haven't told my family. Definitely haven't told your family. <laughs> because, and you know, a friend of mine said today that a well-meaning person said, oh, everybody's a little bit ADHD, a little bit autistic. And it's like, no, because everybody does all of these things every now and then. But for me, it's all the damn time. Yeah. It's all the things all the time. And so when you're like, oh, everybody forgets where their keys are every now and then, it's like, no, it's every day. Every single day. Yeah. I have to put my keys here because if I don't, I have no idea where they are. Yes. And literally sometimes they end up in the fridge. Yeah. So, and so, yeah, kind of getting that, yes, you can relate to occasionally losing things or occasionally forgetting things. That's fine. Yeah, procrastinating but, a bit. Yeah. And, you know, people are like, oh, I procrastinate on stuff. I don't, I don't like doing those jobs. It's like, no, you don't get it. I procrastinate on doing things I desperately want to do. And that's where, that's so painful. I can't even tell you how painful that is. So, um, yeah, please don't do that. Please don't invalidate people, even in a well-meaning way, because you don't understand. If, if it's not all the time every day, you can't possibly understand how fucking horrible and hard it is. Mm. And so it's really, and like, Joe's amazing. I'm so grateful for you because you've just like taken this and run with it. And you've always been very supportive anyway, but you've just been like, right, how are we gonna, how are we going to make things easier for you? Which is really nice. Thank you. Um, you're welcome so yeah if you know somebody who has ADHD or autism or another you know neurodivergency then ask them how you know how can you help how can you yeah. create an environment that is like changing people's routine changing my routine at the last minute changing my plans at the last minute is really stressful so mm. stressful and like one of the things that you do is that you'll be like oh I'll say what time do we have to leave and you'll tell me a time and you'll almost always tell me like half an hour before we have to actually leave, won't you? Uh, well, I can't possibly confirm or deny that. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. And knowing it, it doesn't matter because I will, because the thing, cause there is a thing that happens. It's like, if I have an appointment, like a doctor's appointment at like say half past 10, my brain will be like, right, we've got to leave at half 10. I was like, no, no, brain. That's not what. That's not how this works. At Twenty-five past ten. You'll be like mixing some grout to do some tiling or something. It's like what? <laughs> yes, because I just let's do some plumbing. It's like no. Like time. It's called time blindness, and I've always struggled with it. Um, I've always been a messy fucker as well. So um, yes. So I hope that's been a little bit of an insight. That that kind of became a. This is what it's like inside. I don't want to say this is what it's like inside an ADHD brain because this is my brain and everybody's experience is different mm -hmm. um it's like some people struggle with things that i don't struggle with at all and i struggle with things that other people don't struggle with so it's again there's a, a very wide variety but um i hope also this isn't just aimed at people with adhd i think a lot of the stuff we've talked about today is going to be genuinely useful for everybody mm. like breaking stuff down and you know thinking if they eat the frog advice has always seemed stupid to you and it doesn't work there's nothing wrong with you don't think there's something wrong with you try something else instead yeah if the seven effective seven habits of highly effective people doesn't work you're very polite i changed that to the seven habits of highly fucking boring people because <laughs> i know that that works for a certain type of person i know it does like rich white dudes that's who it works for um but yeah if you read the seven habits of highly effective people which i have read and like, this I was like, made you feel right, like shit. yeah, it did because I like, I was like, right, I have to do these things. I was like, why can't I do these things? Why are these things not working for me? What's wrong with me? I must be really shit. And it's just like, no, it's just if it doesn't work for you, stop doing it. It's not written for you. Yeah. Find something that is written for you. Try something else instead. Step out of the box of shoulds. That is like, this is how things should work. Um, because when you do that, when you when you let go of the idea that we should do things a certain way, it opens up all these opportunities to find ways that actually do work for us. And they might be really weird and they might make people go, why are you doing that? It doesn't matter what they think. If it works for you, go with it. So That's a good takeaway. Yeah, thanks. I hope that this is a useful episode for people. It's been useful for me. This is the first time I've really talked about it. Mm. Come out. You've come out. Yeah. Mm. As a weirdo. I mean, I think people know I was quite weird anyway, but... So next week... Next week. I know what we're talking about. Really? Yes. Some of the writing tools and software that I use. I thought it might be really useful to just kind of go okay. run through stuff. So, cool. Yeah. So thanks, Joe, for interviewing me. No worries. Um, if you are... If you, want, if you are wondering, by the way, if you have ADHD or 
a neurodivergence and you would like to talk to somebody about it, I am absolutely not an expert, but I will happily have a conversation with you about it. So drop me an email, um, vicky at moxiebooks.co.uk, and I will be able to point you in the direction of actual grown-ups who know about this stuff. <laughs> if you're stuck writing your book and you're like, I really desperately want to write my book and nothing, nothing has worked for me, then book a call with me because I have a book breakthrough um, jam session um, and it's awesome and it will get you moving it will give you all of the, t- all of the stuff that you need to well we'll out- basically outline your book in the session and make it so that when you go away you're just going to be able to sit down and start writing and I will give you also some brain tools to help with the mindset stuff and you know brain stuff as well hmm. And yeah, and also I have my free writing prompt calendar at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash calendar. And if you like this podcast, what do people do? Five stars. Review. Five star review and subscribe. Subscribe. Tell and your friends. Yes. Tell your, please tell your friends. That is the best, actually the best thing you could do is tell your friends. Please tell your friends. Um, yeah. Thank you to Podfly for being patient because I know that this episode is late. <laughs> Thank you. Naughty. Um, uh, there was also like a five second pause where nothing happened for a while. In the middle. Oh, when well, my brain stopped working. Yeah, Vicky's brain stopped working and there was just silence for a bit. You might no, want to shorten that down a bit. I think we should leave that in because I think that's a really good representation of what, what my goes, brain is like. What it does. <laughs> yeah. It I just... mean, people might just like start, I don't know. Well, did you know that podcast apps are quite clever? They will, they will actually shorten spaces between, they'll get rid of pauses. Oh, man. Those people, though, who use that in their editing to remove all of the pauses between their words. <laughs> that's a bit weird. They need to stop that. Yeah, this is why Podfly is so great. Thanks, mm. Podfly. Cheers, guys. Um, thank you, Harriet, for also being my working memory sometimes <laughs> and just generally awesome. And thank you to you, dear listener, for listening to this nonsense. We'll see you next week. Yeah. Ta-ta. Bye. Thanks for listening. You can find links and show notes on the website at moxiebooks.co.uk forward slash podcast, where you can also sign up for the best daily emails in the multiverse and find loads of free resources to help you write your book. We'll be back the same time next week with more tales from the book writing trenches and the latest on what the tiny sheeps have been up to. 